It now gives me great pleasure to introduce today's com commencement speaker, Mr. Lloyd Dean. Before I give the details of Lloyd Dean's background, let me note uh, what is becoming increasingly evident that uh, perhaps one of the best medicines for health care is better management and leadership. Lloyd Dean is president and CEO of, of Dignity Health, formerly Catholic Healthcare of the West. Dignity Health is one of the leading non, not for profit healthcare systems in the United States with over $11 billion in assets. It's comprised of 40 acute care hospitals as well as medical clinics, home health organizations, two health plans, five medical practice groups, and an estimated 55,000 employees and 10,000 physicians in California, Arizona, and Nevada. Under Lloyd's leadership, Dignity Health has gone from several years of steep annual operating losses to being recognized as one of the top healthcare systems in the nation. He previously served as Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Advocate Healthcare. Prior to that, he was in, uh, with the Upjohn com uh, Company in key executive and operational management positions for the company's healthcare services division. In 2004, uh, in four, Lloyd served on the California Commission for Jobs and Economic Growth. In 2006, he was appointed co-chair of San Francisco's Mayor's Universal Healthcare Council and co-chair of the Health Healthy San Francisco Program Advisory Committee. He is co-founder of several healthcare reform coalitions, including the National Health CEOs for Health Reform. Lloyd serves on the board of directors of Wells Fargo and Company, the name of our building, and he is chairman of the board of Cytori uh, Therapeutics. Cytori is a San, San Diego-based global biotechnology company providing innovative regenerative medicine products meeting unmet medical needs. Lloyd is a passionate advocate for health reform and, a nationally and is nationally recognized for his leadership at the community, state, and national levels. He is a recipient of many awards and honors and has been recognized as one of the nation's most influential leaders in health care. Lloyd's professional activities and focus on wellness and health care resonate very well with the, rate, with the mission of the Rady School of Management. So ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have Mr. Lloyd Dean as a 2012 commencement speaker. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, thank uh, Dean Sullivan for that very kind and uh, very generous uh, introduction. Uh, I am placing my uh, iPad, uh, my iPhone here for a reason. Um, I am on the final level of the real Angry Bird, and I've been working on this one uh, activity here for exactly 14 days. Uh, so there is some probability that I might uh, have to reach there uh, and finish that. I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, this wonderful, wonderful uh, in institution. Uh, again, uh, thanking uh, Dean Sullivan, I want to acknowledge uh, Chancellor uh, Fox, who I'll comment on uh, in uh, the body of my uh, remarks. Uh, it is truly an honor to stand before uh, this uh, outstanding administration, uh, this faculty, uh, members of the advisory uh, council, uh, all of the staff associated with this institution, and certainly the family, friends, wives, significant others, and associates of these outstanding individuals to my left. Uh, last year I had the privilege of giving the undergraduate commencement address 
at UC uh, Merced. And I must say, uh, this is a much better looking group uh, than I dealt with at uh, Merced. Um, and I also want to say, uh, about uh, three years ago, I participated in the commencement uh, exercise at uh, UC Santa Barbara, and you look much more sober uh, uh, than uh, that uh, 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 group. I also, before I get into the body of my comments, I want to begin by acknowledging every uh, female uh, assembled here. This is the first time that I have figured out what it's like to walk in a dress. Uh, and I must tell you, I'm so happy that, that most of you weren't in here when I uh, ascended the stairs because you would have seen uh, that I stepped on uh, the back of uh, uh, the road. And I have chided my, my wife many times why she can't move faster uh, in her uh, dress, but now I really do uh, understand. I also want to begin by acknowledging the parents, the family members, and the friends of this outstanding class. Yes, it is the individuals that you see seated here who we are gathered to celebrate. But I applaud you, the parents, the friends, the wives, the supporters, because without your love and without your support, certainly many of them, because of their own fortitude and tenacity, would be here. But I can assure you, the journey would not have been what it was without you. So ladies and gentlemen, I acknowledge you and honor your contribution to this great graduating class. As I mentioned last year when I spoke to the undergraduates uh, at UC Merced, I talked to them about the challenges of graduating and starting a career in this very difficult global and certainly U.S. environment. This year, I have the privilege of standing before graduates who have given of their weekends, uh, many of you uh, who have uh, toiled uh, full uh, time, and who sit here based upon uh, either their current employment, but most assuredly because of their association with this great program. They sit before me with the skills and the training that is necessary to be successful in whatever, in, in whichever path they choose. One of the difficult things about uh, addressing such a distinguished group is that, see, here's what I understand. Most of them right now, after Dean Sullivan's introduction, are listening very carefully, but they're also sizing me up. And they're saying, if that man can run a, a $13 billion uh, company, and if he's done all of those things that the dean uh, referenced, I think I may have the skills to take him out. Well, I want to assure you that is going to be a more difficult task uh, than uh, perhaps uh, it may seem. But again, it is great to be here because I am especially honored to talk to this graduating class of Rady School because of this school's special focus on preparing tomorrow's leader in the area of life sciences. I get to come to this area a lot, uh, serving as the chair of Cytori Therapeutics here. Uh, and I have been witness to the tremendous growth of the technology that is bolstering 
this region's economy, and I am grateful for all of the benefits that the people here are getting from the wonderful and tr tremendous breakthroughs that continue and have been developed on this hollow ground that we sit and stand. I am hopeful to the graduates that many of you uh, will, will continue to explore and expand your careers in the area of health administration. That is something that is near and dear to my heart. But the reason is because the financial and the management skills that you have developed here will be essential and critical to our nation's ability to deliver cost-effective, efficient, quality health care to those that we serve in this nation. Let me talk briefly as an example about the health care industry because it underscores the topic that is the theme of my comments, and that is how do you succeed by anticipating change. In just a few days, the Supreme Court will rule on the constitutionality of the Affordable Care Act. It's better known in some circles as Obamacare. The name is not the issue. But regardless of how the court rules, it will have a tremendous and profound impact on how health care sustains itself in this country. But what won't change are the market forces that are compelling us to do a better job of providing quality health care at a lower cost. Now, why did I use health care? It was only an example. However, the demand to change our business models are happening and necessary in almost any industry that you could name. In the ability to keep up, much less get ahead of the pack, is intense. So today, I'd like to offer a few suggestions on succeeding in today's business environment and give you a glimpse into my journey to where I have landed in my career. There are four strategies that I want to highlight. First, it is critical that each and every one of you first anticipate, anticipate and plan, not just for the job that you have, but for your second job, your third job, your fourth job. In my career, I've had 13 different jobs. 13. And I may look old, but I'm not much older than some of your parents. Um, but the good thing is that I've never been fired from a job. But remember, I've had 13 jobs. Is it just that I've got some kind of deficit, attention deficit, that I can't stay in one place? No. It's because it was purposeful. Because I wanted to gain a body of knowledge to continue to grow and to continue to bring value to whatever opportunity I might have. Gene Nettick said the following, it is choice, not chance, that determines your destiny. I'll say that once more. It is choice, not chance, that determines your destiny. And each and every one of you sit seated, sitting here today have made a choice to further your education to help continue on 
toward your destiny. The second factor of success, when you are handed a challenge, stay focused. One of the good things about the technology and the internet that we all cherish is the instant availability of data and information. One of the challenges of that is that we can be engulfed in that and lose focus. If there's one thing that I have learned in my 30 professional years, and that is that to be successful, one has to be able to sort through and determine what is critical and what one must let go. That is the difference between a good executive or a good leader, and in my opinion, a great one. When I came to my current job, this company was losing a million dollars a day. Over the last previous three years prior to coming, they had lost an aggregate of a billion dollars. Most companies would never survive losing a billion dollars. So what is it that now has changed to make it one of the most successful, most financially stable healthcare entities on earth? It wasn't Lloyd Dean. It was focus, focus, focus. What did that focus involve? Vision, strategies, talent, management, attitude, measuring success, measuring progress, a culture of accountability, setting milestones, rewarding people, and having some fun. This is, those folks that know me know, this is about as serious as you'll ever see me, because I want to do a good job for these graduates. Um, but I take the work very seriously, but I don't take myself too seriously. And I ask that you think about that as you go through your journey. Third, thirdly, when you anticipate change is necessary in your business or whatever professional career or endeavor you engage in, Begin early to formulate the new model and to break the mold of the old. And then finally, this issue of team. There is very few successful people in this country, CEOs, and I, I sit on many things with some of the most prestigious uh, in this country in the world. Where their success is because of them. But sometimes people get in their mind that this company is successful or I am successful because of me. I will tell you that all of the gifts that I have been given have come by ensuring and doing everything that I can to make sure that those that I surround myself with and that I have the privilege of serving with are also successful. My success is a manifestation of my team's success. It is not about Lloyd Dean. It is about the team. And if you make sure that those that ultimately will report to you and work with you are successful, members of this class, you will be so successful. But we know that along our career paths, there are going to be obstacles. But this 
university, this faculty have prepared you with the skills to deal with those challenges. I want to share a quote with you. Our problems in this country, in most in the world, are man-made. Therefore, they can be solved by men and women. And when men and women have the capacity to address any problem that they have had a hand in making. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. Often problems appear to be unsolvable. But by working together and pulling together in capturing the human spirit that you have exemplified, it is my belief, in our belief, that those problems can be solved in any challenge we can defeat. That was a paraphrase of a speech that John F. Kennedy gave to a class just like this at the American University in 1963. So in conclusion, I say to you, the graduates, you leave this campus with all of the tools necessary to achieve your dreams. Focus your time in your resources, in your life, on those things that you care about and that you are passionate about, and also that you believe in. Finally, Malcolm X said that education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare today. You have prepared yourselves. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. To the graduates, to the parents, to all associated with these handsome and beautiful graduates, I wish you the best. May God bless you. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here.